you know how to compute a contour integral along a given contour from z1 to z2, but you may wonder, does the integral depend on the path we follow from z1 to z2? Or will we find the same results for all paths? You see the answer to that question in the examples in this video. So first we'll take our c1 from 1 over here to minus 1. First we go along the circle the top part, with this parameterization over here, and then we will do the same integral, but we go via the lower half of the circle. So, which function shall we take? Well, we take the function f of z equals 1 over z. Okay, blows up in zero, but that doesn't matter because we will stay far away from zero. So, we compute the integral, the integral along c1, f dz, so what do we do, need to do? We have to plug in the parameterization z equals e to the power i t, that t runs from 0 to pi, the 1 over z becomes e to the power minus i t, and the dz becomes i times e to the power i t dt, so this part over here. Ah, and that's really nice because you see the e to the power minus i t and the e to the power i t cancel out, so we just have the integral of i with respect to t, so we go for constant, so it just yields i times pi. So, very nice function to start with. What about the second path? Now we go downwards. So, we have a different parameterization, z equals e to the power minus i t. Again, t runs from 0 to pi. Uh, then the 1 over z becomes 1 over e to the power minus i t, so it becomes e to the power i t, times a dz. A dz becomes now minus i times e to the power minus i t dt, so there we go. And uh, you see, the, again, the e to the power minus i t and the power e to the power i t cancel out, so we integrate minus i from 0 to pi, so that it yields a minus pi i. So we're going via the top one gives pi i, via the low one gives minus pi i. So you see, the results, the results are not the same. In general, such an integral may depend on the path. Oh, you know this, of course, from your factor calculus already. So what happens if you go uh, via c1 first and then back uh, via minus i2, so you go via closed curve, then you get the uh, integral along minus c2 equals pi i, because it equals minus the integral along c2. So uh, going along the closed path c2 minus c2 back, you get pi i plus pi I equals 2 pi i. So in this case, the integral along a closed curve does not equal zero. Second example, f of z equals z. And now we take just any point. Uh, then we know the, the integral f dz equals the integral from a to b. And z of t times z prime dt, where we do not specify the curve, so what can we do? Well, you know that z times z prime is the derivative of 1 half z squared. So we end up with the integral from a to b of the derivative of 1 half z squared. So we can use the main theorem of, theorem of calculus that gives us 1 half z squared uh, between endpoint minus starting point. So 1 half times z2 squared minus 1 half times z1 squared. So in this case, the value of the integral only depends on start point and end point. And in particular, an integral along a closed path would be zero. So to summarize, the contour integral may depend on the path or may not depend on the path. That depends on the function. And uh, uh, similarly, a contour along an uh, integral along a closed curve may be zero or may not be zero. And that also depends on the function. So you have to be a bit careful with that.